I do want to start in prayer. Um, how many of you uh, um, are, well, how many of you are on Facebook, but how many of you have heard about um, the update with Lois Early and her health? Yeah, that, that's gotten around. So um, Lois Early had a, an a, a appointment, I believe it was on Friday. And uh, just what came out of that, um, and you know, Lois has had a, a long-term battle with her health. And it, what was revealed at the doctor's appointment was um, just uh, thing, things had progressed with her condition much, much more than I think even they were anticipating. It was kind of known that this was going to be a long-term struggle, but it, it's going to be a lot more short-term. And uh, they had a, um, we, we don't know, obviously, don't know those specifics, but it was enough that, that Bill and, and Lois wanted to, to make it known to the wider church family, the wider circle of their community. Um, and so hospice was brought in yesterday. They had an interview. I have not gotten a chance to touch base with them. I've been talking to them Friday and Saturday, but didn't get a chance to talk to them about how that went. So I'm waiting for more information. But it's just something we really want to hold before the Lord. Um, and you know Bill. Um, you know, I can't quote him exactly ever. But um, uh, one thing he did say was, um, you know, all of our life together, has prepared us hmm. to walk through these next days. And I thought that was really, um, that was really something that I took from that. And it, it, it was, the irony was not lost on me that I was going then to officiate a wedding after I talked with them. And, and this, is, this is what it looks like to be so faithful um, to, to your spouse. So I, I say that to you as an encouragement, but also to inform your prayers. And, and one thing Lois said to me is, our small group, has just been amazing hmm. through this whole process. And you know, they, they had called me, but then they also informed their small group as well. And so I say that to, to just, it's a picture of what we're trying to talk about today. You know, all, all, with all the verses and, and, and things that we know up here, we really wanna, we wanna t what we're talking about it, we want it to hit here and then, and then take shape in how we do life because this really does matter because days like the earlies are walking through will come. And what, what will that look like? So anyway, that was supposed to be a brief introduction, but uh, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, the, um, the life of, of the church, the life of being a Christian in community with other Christians is um, the ability to live and move and, and hold different emotions all the time. Uh, on the one hand, celebrating what you're doing, celebrating um, bringing together Becca and Dylan in marriage yesterday and praising you. And at the same time, Lord, weeping and, and mourning uh, with Bill and Lois and walking alongside them through a very challenging road. Um, Lord, where else but in Christian community can, can these two things exist side by side? And, and we can say it through it all. Bill and Lois can say through it all, you are good. You are faithful. And so, Lord, we pray for our time today. Um, Lord, as we hope to talk very practically about how we do this, Lord, there's always a gap. There, uh, there's a gap that exists in all of us between what we know, what we believe, and then how we live and how we function. And Lord, we pray that today would just be another step in, in closing that gap. We want to be a church that not only declares what we believe, but then shows it in how we interact with one another, how we live in our homes, how we live um, in our smaller gatherings. So, Lord, we just entrust our time to you. Um, we pray that there would be freedom, openness, and clarity um, within this time that you've given us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, for those of you um, who've been with us, you know that we have, we've, uh, as leadership, as elders of the church, um, seeing where where God has brought our church and, and really we're coming out of we're coming out of this COVID season and our church we went right out of a COVID season into a season of transition and none of that is great for community none of that is great for fellowship and I think uh, anybody I talk to has felt the absence of community and fellowship 
over the past two years. And then you threw in a whole bunch of political and all kinds of, the people are divided. And so as we were seeing this, we were, we were feeling a, a draw and an emphasis for fellowship, community, because we are people of habit. We, we can say one thing, and until we intentionally give it focus and really try, and really try to you know, make changes at a, at a wide level, will we begin to see change. So that was one thing we saw. And then the other thing was that God was bringing um, many new people, many new families to our church, and it was really shifting the balance and makeup of our church. Like our church is a very different church than it was one year, two years ago. And what we want to make sure that what's happening is that we're seeing a, a melding. We are one body, one Lord. We don't have, if you've been here uh, longer than two years crowd, and if you've been here, you know, shorter than two years crowd, we want, to see, we want to see genuine fellowship, bringing people in, getting them equipped for ministry. So that, that's kind of the, the motivation. And we felt like now was the time we need to relaunch, um, well, whatever you want to call them, and here's what I here's here's what I, this is what I told Amy. She's like, should we should we, you know, do you want to put them out there as you know gospel centered community? And I said, I do, but I also know our people. And I said they're going to call them whatever they want to call them, regardless <laughs> of what I say. Um, so whether you call them home groups, community groups, life groups, gospel centered community, um, Whatever you call them, we, we wanted to give intentional focus to them. And so that, that involved a lot of prayer, preparation, teaching in this Sunday school, and then also talking to you, polling. And um, uh, that, was, that was incredibly effective that you're, to hear your response. So that's what got us here today. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about what we've specifically talked about in this class. I think maybe that's a good question for them. What, Ooh. what, how would you, everything we've talked about, how would you describe what a, what a gospel centered small group is to look like? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and gospel centered community and like all, the things that we talked about, they, they certainly affect how we do church in like our larger gatherings. Like I think everything that we talked about applied on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. but where we really wanted to put some intentional focus is how do we do this? also in our smaller gatherings as well. So yeah, way to put it on them. That's good. I like that. I That's like what project that. managers do. I like that. I love it. I love it. So does anybody want to want to share? That's growing together, you know, spiritually. In our, in our context, our group that we're part of, um, I mean, our relationships in that group has been long years. Um, and so we've grown together uh, as uh, friends in the Lord um, and there were, there were challenges as we were growing there's times where we asked pointed questions about certain things that we were all there one person was doing or a couple other friends were doing we had the opportunity and the freedom to do it as well only because our relationships have come to a point where it's okay for us to have those pointed conversations yeah. um, and then being vulnerable too I mean, to us that was a I mean, to us, that we love our group is we're so vulnerable in sharing so many things. I mean, our, our kids' fab lives, what they're doing, what struggles that they have, um, how they can be involved, and 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 seek counsel. I mean, we've got some really godly people in our group, so that's so it's been a, you know, it's been a joy to see a group like that and to you know lead it for a long time. Now sit under another leadership. It's beautiful, loving. Mm -hmm. So that's good. I'd, I'd agree with everything Shanti just said. He said it really well, too. I, I think the desire is that we create the kind of spiritual intimacy with this group of people, 6, 8, 10, whatever it is, that we'd love to have with everybody in the church, but can't make it happen. So but that aspect of going deeper, I mean, some of the issues that people in our small group have walked through have shared, gotten counsel on it. We've seen the victory in it. I mean, that... That's really, I think, what we're supposed to do, loving one another and caring for one another. Um, like Sanjay, we have some wise people in our group, and they share wisdom. Everybody should have Clint in their group, but there's only one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not for grabs, I don't think that I missed it. But uh, I think it, it really comes down to trying to create that spiritual intimacy that we can't possibly do with 200 people, but with 8 or 10, we can really get into each other's lives. And there's mentoring that goes on and that level of caring. 
But it has to be based on the Word of God. We study the Word every time we get together. Even if it's on ice cream social, we will study study the Word of God. And that, that's that's our fuel. That's our book. I think that's the place to, to, to help each other see how Scripture applies to everyday life. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, it's really easy for all of us to hear a good sermon on Sunday and be inspired, but not know exactly how that works in situation X at work or at mm-hmm. school or, you know, that. So I think that's where, um, just to see the application and have people walk through it together. Yes. And then you talked about political, you know, variances that we all had in the last few years, right? And yeah. so in our group that try to look at some of the things that we see or uh, hear mm-hmm. and then uh, from political mess that's there, but then like Gail rightly pointed out, so how does what are the scriptures informing us? Yeah. We've had so many conversations about so what does the scripture inform us about what we are hearing and what it actually means to us. How do we engage now with what we are hearing? So that was, yeah, the foundation of the scripture is so huge for, and should be huge for every single, what we call them small groups, but if you want to call them, whatever the group is, <laughs> but in our small group, that is, that is yeah. Uh, foundation. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, I want to follow up in addition to what everyone said on the caring aspect. Um, I, I know personally two good friends who ended up leaving the church because they had major problems in their lives. You know, one woman had an amputation of a leg and another one had lost a son in the war. Um, and the church wasn't there for them. Mm. And um, they weren't really huge churches either but they weren't there for them. And, and I just think that if you're in a small group, you have that close group of people that you're gonna share your life with. They're gonna know what you're going through. They're gonna be able to hold you up and, and um, you know, help bear your burdens without you falling through the cracks. Yeah. And, um, and it, I, I think it frees up pastors because some people expect pastors to always be there if they have a crisis or something because your group is surrounding you and holding you up. So the caring aspect, I think, is, Mm, that's good. That's good. And I think, you know, and, and it's, it, you know, we have small groups, not so that um, pastors don't have to care and shepherd because, you know, I, we get a call. I'm, I am there. I'll be there. Any, and I, I told Bill and I meant it. I said, even in these next couple of days, I, I have this block that I'm going to be at a wedding and I cannot come then. But if it's at night, day, I'll be there. But care can be multiplied. That, that's the idea. We want to multiply everything at Effort of Bible Fellowship Church, which includes the care that, that our people receive and also the leaders that develop through that process. And, and I, I've said this from the very beginning, um, you know, what we want to see at Effort of Bible Fellowship, we want this to be the place where you get the most Bible teaching. Um, we, 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 wanna, we want to, to, to keep that in our focus, but then also that you get, are cared for the best place as well. Like that, that's just what we want. We want, we want to, we want to go after the teaching of God's word and then also caring for one another. Michael and then Gail. Um, I just wanted to add to that, that at church where we get a lot of our teaching and but a lot of our Christian interaction, it's a very controlled environment. Everyone's looking their best. Uh, the conversations you have are probably no longer than five minutes. When you have a smaller group, you are in their home, you are seeing their kids run around, talking about their adult kids. You get more life on life interaction. And and the Christian faith is comes from the Word of God, but then should end up changing the way we live. Yes. And if you don't have that interaction, like there's no accountability, there's no there's nothing keeping you bringing the word of God into your life. And it's it's really important. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think the um, another kind of a, another layer on top of all of it is that every small group is unique in the combination of gifts and abilities and strengths and weaknesses. And a lot of times you see ministry flow out of a particular small group. I've seen ones that were very involved in pro-life activity, very um, other 
ministers, the children's ministry, you know, just different, every small group's going to have, hopefully, something that they're passionate about that they can work on under the authority of the church, but with more boots on the ground, kind of. You know, that there's, a, there's options and opportunities for a small group to do things that would take a whole lot more to get the whole church doing. Mm. Um, so that's just a that, that's a really great point. I just want to touch on a little bit as, uh, as to the, the variances you will see um, and the, the, the variety of approaches that you will see, but then we want to see a common thread run through them. But So just to your point, some small groups meet every single week. Some small groups only gather once a month. Um, and that, there's so many things like life stage and factor. And, and what we have seen and what you know, conviction of mine is that we are not to dictate the day, the time, the length. Um, what we've been trying to do in this class is we want to see some common threads running through it and, and have our groups under the oversight of our church leadership, our vision, where we're going. But then how that gets worked out, I don't, the, the variety there is not a weakness, it's actually a strength. Because, um, because life, is, <laughs> life is different for like, you know, what life looks like um, if you're an empty nester very different than what it might look like um, if you're a young couple with kids. Um, and so is the Bible big enough to apply to all that? Yeah. So should our small groups be the same way? Absolutely. So yeah, there's, there's definitely, you're, no small group, just like no church, is going to look exactly the same. And yet what I hope is coming through is that any small group you go to at Effort of Bible Fellowship, if we're putting you up there on the poster, that there's going to be, there's going to be some common threads of yes, this 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 is this is an effort of Bible Fellowship small group. Looks really different than this one, but this is this is the same thing. We, we didn't talk about this, but so I'm putting you on the spot. Go like for what, it. What would be those threads? Like you know, what are those kind of those main topics that or, or truths or whatever it would be that you would want to see in each of them? Yeah, yeah. So I think um, w one thing that has just continued to you know you you almost you almost say it goes without saying, but there's nothing that goes without saying. Uh, is that our community is based on the Word of God. I mean, one thing, so at, at the wedding yesterday, I, uh, Dylan and Becca's wedding, I was, re remind, I was remarking to Linnea how different my sense of community is now. Because the men that were around me at the time uh, when Linnea and I got married were great friends. We had great community. But not all of it was established, like, based on our loved um, uh, our experience of the Lord. You know, it wasn't necessarily Christian community and just the depth of my community now, it's almost like you can't compare it. And so um, whether you're doing a formal study um, and, and sometimes we make, we make use of, you know, video resources or, or just go through a book of the Bible or whether you're just discussing sermon application questions, which we're going to be starting up in the next sermon series, and whether you're going through them, it's, it, there's a time where you're focused on the Word of God. I always like to say this, our, our small groups, our gospel-centered communities, they, we study the Bible, but it's more than a Bible study. So you want to you wanna focus on the Bible, but then also, Gail said it perfectly, apply that to our lives. And that's the part we have really emphasized because I think we're good in our church, if I could speak candidly, I think we are very good at going to a Bible study and interacting with the text. You, you are Bible people. You like Bible studies. You guys are good at those. Where I've wanted us to grow in is then making that pivot and, and saying, how does that apply to you? What, it, what does it look like for you now to change how you're a husband, how you're a dad, or where are you struggling to, to, to grasp this? And so we want to see it then apply then to each other. So in the word, but then more outward to one another. Um, and I would say that would, that's a, that's a com that's really common thread. And then, and then a third thing would be, we cannot forsake that, we cannot misunderstand the power or misplace the power of just being together. There's, there's no wasted time, like that snack time or some of you guys do dinner. God's at work there. That's Christian <coughs> fellowship, just getting together. And so having that be a time, you guys should laugh. You guys should have inside jokes. You guys should, you know, I mean, Dylan's in my small group, so it's really easy. Um, but, but you should, there should be, we should have fun. Because isn't life together is a joy. 
and that should radiate. It sh we're not just getting together to be a learning center. We're not just getting together to be a hospital for the suffering. We're also getting together to get a foretaste of that day when we will celebrate together. So, like I said, only in Christian community can all of these things be happening at once. Julie, I knew you'd, I, I had a feeling you'd raise your hand after that. Just to add something to your pivot, And, and that's a great point as well. I, I have seen the benefit of those intergenerational groups. And so he, here's, this is another area where we allow flexibility and we trust that the Spirit of God is working in how these groups form together. So if um, we, we don't say this is the 20-something group. You know, some, and some churches take that approach, and that's fine. I think there, there could be strengths to that, but that's not our approach. We don't say this is the young adult group, this is for 55 plus. We let the groups form as they form. And maybe it just so happens your group does tend to be more of the same age group. That's not like, a fl like you're not doing it wrong. That's how your group form. But I would just say, are you open then? to maybe em embracing other people. That, that's more what we're looking for. The, what's the heart posture of the group? We're not going for this or for that, but how the Lord forms those groups. And, and that changes over time too, um, as, as life goes on and, and maybe people feel called to minister elsewhere, those group dynamics can change. It's good. Yeah, in some ways, if, even if the groups did have similar seasons in them, how do the groups interact together? You know, if there is a, a group that has a lot of younger families and a group that has some senior season saints, what does maybe getting together every so often just to enjoy fellowship, you know, and that, that blessing? Because we, you know, I'm tipping my, tipping my hand a little bit to the sermon today. It's, it's, that's a biblical concept for the older saints to pour into yes. the younger ones. Yes, We need them. Yeah, <laughs> and so amen. It's, it, yeah, it really is that sense of us not, okay, we all have our groups now. And we all now, you know, we move forward. It's we, how do we continue to engage one another even in maybe, you know, maybe even if it looks less structured and more organic. Yeah. Because I think that's such a big part of it for the leaders of the groups. Because I, Dan talked about the sermon questions. Uh, that was something I had done in my past was I would give out sermon questions to the leaders, but I would in every email say, this is a springboard for your preparation. Yeah. This is not, this is what you will now ask. Yes. Because yes. to Julie's point, you know your group. Like Jesus knew who he was interacting with. Yeah. And how he's talking to them is going to be 
different based on who he's talking to. Same truth, but how he engages them. No. So the leaders know their groups, knew their groups, and know their groups better than I do. So to take these questions and say, where is our group right now? And maybe one of the questions Dan gives you, you know, of course it's a good question, but like, actually I think for our group we would have maybe some more rich conversation if we, we talked about this aspect of mm. the message or this aspect mm. of that truth. And mm. for, for you as leaders to really like own your group, right? Like that sense mm. of like, you know those people, mm. you know where they are, mm. you know how to be blessing. Mm. Uh, it's really, really good point. I mean, I just need to add to that. You know, there, there is different seasons for even the makeup of the group based on what your group is going on. Like I've been in groups with seasons where life was hitting a lot of people very, very hard. And in, in those months, it looked a lot more like care and prayer. And, and it wasn't like in those months, it's like, well, we don't care about studying God's word. You know what I mean? No, but in that season, what we needed. And then I've been in other seasons where there was a lot of growth happening. We needed some more foundations. So then the flavor or shade of the group at that time was a little bit more engage, like engaging, focused, study. And, and you... Yeah, we want to we want to embrace all of that. We don't want to look at one group and say, "Man, they yeah, that group doesn't value uh, <laughs> the word of God," or, or or that group is so rigid in how they do things. We just we want to we want to recognize and trust leaders. That's been the one one thing we want to trust the Spirit working not only in our groups but in our leaders. So, how about um, the missional part? Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll I'll tee it up. So I, I did the week on mission. You know, how, how are we missional groups? How do we reach out to uh, the lost? And and I, you know, I really appreciate Dan was talking to me about it. Of how do we take this truth and help our people to to really grow, right? So I think I think when I shared, uh, I think it gave us a really big picture where I think someone could have listened to it and been like, "Whew, that's." That is a long distance from where we are right now. And I think, you know, I've said this to all of you. I've said it publicly. I've said it privately. You know, me and Kelly just being cared for as two Christians with Dan, in our past, I don't know if there was always a tender, like, how do we go step by step into this? It was like, this is the goal, and we're going big or going home. And, yeah, let's have a grand grand vision for these things. But, like, how do we get there over time? So why don't you, you know, yeah. share a little bit about yeah. that? Because what yeah. you share with me was so helpful, and I think yeah. it would serve the group. Yeah, all right. So you might have to remind me as, <laughs> I, as I go, make sure we're getting to that. Um, so I think, I think what, ben, what Ben shared, so I, I think it was, it was exactly where I do believe the Lord is, is leading us. I, 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 I anticipate a day in the future where... Your friends, the people that you interact with at work, your coworkers, they are more likely to come hear about Jesus by coming over to dinner than they are to come hear me preach. Just with the, with the way a lot of our culture is going. It's not that we don't want them to end up here, but, but the, the avenue they, they, they may approach. Um, here, here's where I think it starts. Do I have a closed, shielded off posture? Or do I have an open posture in regards to, to how my group functions or how my group um, uh, relates. And, and we're, for those of you who don't know, our next sermon series is First Peter. First Peter is all about the identity of the people of God, not separate from the world, not over the world, but going into the world, distinct and yet scattered among. And so what does that look like for small groups? And I, it starts with a posture of openness, that we are here in this Lidditz neighborhood, in this Denver neighborhood, for a reason. Now, it doesn't mean we have a revolving, a revolving door, um, you know, having that empty chair and expecting every time someone is new is going to be in this group. And yet, I think that empty chair is a great reminder to say, Lord, there's more that you want to do here than just us. And that that might stretch us a little bit. There's more that you want to do. We're not the end all be all. You haven't stopped with this group. <laughs> there may be more neighbors, more people that you want to, to bring in and it might look different, but starting with that open posture. And, and I think thinking of your group, how do we reach someone? Like I was talking with Ben, maybe it doesn't look like your small group time. Like let's say you meet on Sunday night. Maybe it's not 
engaging with an unbeliever then. Maybe it's Tuesday night, you have someone f over for dinner, but then you also bring someone from your small group. So they're not just interacting with you, but they're seeing your community. Like, there can be other venues for some of these things rather than that one time. Because I, I, I heard the, what someone said, if we have this intimate shepherding time in our group, which we want, how do we continually bring new people into that? And, and then my response is, it doesn't all have to happen at once, and it doesn't all have to happen at the same time. One of the things that small group, uh, it's life together. I don't know if your small group does this, ours does. We have text threads that, together, um, you know, email groups, phone calls. You know, we're, we're connected in our modern age. There's, there's ways we live together that go beyond just the time we gather, just like the church. We want there to be times that we live together beyond just Sunday morning. Was that getting to some of it? That was a lot of the good stuff. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, any, any conversation with that for you? I do. I think what we're touching on, or what Dan's touching on, is there is such complexity to the Christian life, right? It's not this, shouldn't we be for one another? Shouldn't we have intimate conversations as Christians? Yes. Should we be reaching the lost? Yes. You know, it, it, it's that sense of how do we hold these things open? Mm -hmm. um, but we have to like you're saying, take this truth and apply it to our lives. So any, is there any, any thoughts, questions on that? Yeah. I could share just with Ben after one of the, the sessions that he taught. There's a book um, by Ashley and Heather Holloman. I gave you the wrong spelling, actually. Um, called Scent. And it talks about being evangelism-minded in your day-to-day -day life. You know, when you go to the grocery store, she had an experience where she was in the dentist chair with stuff dripping out of her mouth. Yeah. And she shared with the, the hygienist that she had been praying about, she needed a retainer because she was grinding her teeth. She prayed about it. She shared it with somebody at church. He turned out to be a dentist, told her to come, and she couldn't afford it. Um, he said, come and I'll take care of it for you. And when she shared with the hygienist that she had prayed about it and God had met her need, the hygienist broke down in tears and expressed what she was dealing with. So it was like one of those God appointments that yeah. you have no idea when you walk in. Mm -hmm. But her point being that God is at work all the time, all around us. Mm -hmm. And if we can just be available to him and open to opening ourselves up to people, that he can accomplish great things. It's just a, it's a, it's an exciting book to read yeah. because it points out that we are not all given the gift of evangelism, but we are all given the opportunities to do the work of an evangelist, you know, yes. to be part of it, even if it's planting the seed or watering or whatever, yeah. um, or encouraging other believers too, same thing. But um, I, I keep coming back to that book to say, it's, you know, it's not us that has to do the work. It's yes. the Holy Spirit doing the yes. work. We just get to go along, kind of, you know. Please. It's like the dad taking the kid. My dad used to take me to a hardware store when I was little. Like the dad taking the kid along to involving him or her in his life. Yeah. And the kid grows and learns how to do what all of it, yeah. so. I still see the effects of that, by the way. She's more dangerous and lows than she is at the mall. <laughs> Please send me the, the details. I'll, I'll, I'll add that to the other two books. Like I'm going to be kind of promoting some books along with our new sermon series. And, and two of those books that I would like to add that one to are called Saturate. Uh, by Jeff Vanderstelt and Everyday Church um, by Tim Chester. And uh, one of the, th the things that run through there is doing everyday things with gospel intentionality. And one of the things we've been able, like just our church, we have a lot of people who love the restaurant Three Sisters. And there's, there's a server there, <laughs> yeah, named Olivia that we all interact with. And we're all praying for her and trying to be a witness. And she is putting it together that we all go to the same place. And it's like, that's not something that is like, oh, we're all doing this service project. We're just going out to eat, getting some great Thai food. And yet we are praying Lord, in our interaction, um, we're praying for this person. So it's just, it's little pivots. I think, Gail, it's just little pivots like, like that. Yeah, Michael. Um, I have a question. So what I hear you guys saying is that, that we shouldn't, like, separate family life from missional life. Mm -hmm. So, like, 
It's not like, a, okay, we're over here, we do our church thing or we do our family thing, and we also go and we outreach and we do mission. How do those, how do you make those things overlap? Oh, that's so good. You repeat the question? Oh, yeah, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, so, um, Michael was saying, how do you, okay, you have, you have, we have these values, right? They're family life, missional life, and, and they're not to be completely separate. How do we, how do we make them overlap? Is that? Yeah. Well, specifically in your small group, you were saying when well, your small group has a community there that you want to help care, safe place, but you also want to be missional. You want to evangelize. You want to, you want to reach out to other people and serve and love. How do those things overlap? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're the pastor. I've man. been talking. I've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, I can share a little bit. Um, what, 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 uh, one, of, one, of, one of the things would be just remember that here's what we need to realize. When we are outreaching, and, and anyone who's been on a short-term mission trip will know this, who, gro- who, benef- who, who are short-term mission trips uh, benefiting the most? Is it the people that are going or the people that the people that you're going to minister to or the people that go? People yeah, it's a, it's a both and. So remember that the act, part of our discipleship is getting out of our comfort zone and having us interact with people around us. And as a leaders and as pastors, that, that's actually part of us growing up. Discipleship isn't us just sitting around reading the Bible together. I mean, Jesus taught us to teach teach to observe everything that he taught us, which also involves going. So realizing that these things are not separate and, and that just saying, using opportunities. Okay, last week we had someone new in our group. They asked questions we don't normally ask. They're, they're maybe at a different place. How are we? You know, judging the temperature. How are we? How are we? You know, that kind of thing. I do this with my kids when we have people into our home. Um, I'm, uh, one time we had dinner with a, a, a a homosexual couple and I talked with my kids beforehand and I talked with them after and we had them over for family dinner and I'm sharing the gospel we're very we're having a wonderful conversation and I said this is what it looks like to love people that we have some strong disagreements with and it was a it was a discipleship moment for for our for our kids and to kind of have that same kind of uh, understanding and then the other I'll just go back to different venues there's just diff, there's there's a time and place where your group will uh, need to just be just your group, and then other times where it's more open, like a picnic or something. That's a great time. Invite invite people in it and let people know, hey, group's going to be a little different tonight. Our posture is a little more outward that night. Did I see a hand over? I'm sorry. I thought that one of the books you mentioned has a great example. I think it's Saturate. Or it might be Gospel Fluency by Jeff Vanderstel. Yeah. He had a neighbor that wanted a tree root. Oh, yeah. And so he got together when his neighbor was away for a week with some of, some of his neighbors. And he said, hey, what do you think about us taking Bob's tree root out? He's been talking about that for a long time. And then he invited some guys from, his, from the small group. And so together on a Saturday, they took it out. Never said anything. He was a guy. I'm taking your chances. But yeah. <laughs> that's a job. He was very risky. Too. Yeah. And uh, and then when when he came back, he, he inquired what happened. Found out Jeff was behind us, and so then he calls him over, and he said, "What'd you do that for?" And he said, well, you've been complaining about it all these years. We're tired of hearing you from you know. <laughs> so the guy actually brought up, what do you guys do on Thursday night? He said, what are you talking about? He said, you see all these cars around your house and people coming in. Is this a church group or something? Mm. And he said, well, it's, yeah, we read the Bible together and pray for each other. And we usually eat, eat together. And he said, how come you never invited me to come? Mm. And so through that, you know, indirectly, this guy is inviting himself to come, and, mm. and he comes to faith in Christ, and he, he becomes part of their small group. Praise God! I mean, it's just an Praise example, God. right? No, yeah. I think you're right. That's the program, right? Yeah. Exactly right. I mean, like. I know it's such a bad answer, but I feel like my answer to Michael's question of uh, it depends. Like, where has God placed you right now? Amen. You know, Amen. so for my family, you know, we've 
we had the younger years and, and, and mission looked a certain way, interacting with the church looked a certain way, you know, and then you blink, as, as some of you know, and, you know, the Austins were at our house last couple Sundays ago, and our kids now are the older ones caring for their little kids so that we can enjoy fellowship. So, you know, do I intentionally think, oh, part of mission right now is to serve the Austins kids? Like, no. But that's where we are. That's where we find ourselves, is that we have these older kids who, you know, like we joke that Anderson and Lewis are like best friends, you know, and yeah. it's just like yeah. this 15-year-old and this little guy. And But that's a way for our kids to be missional. Yes. I, I believe they yes. are being Good. Christ-like in how they engage. And this, for Mifflin, this was our first week of school, and, and we asked each of the kids, what does it look like to be a light for Christ? Yes. Or where do, they, where, do they want, where do they want to pray? Where do they want to see God? And Anderson brought it up, which, you know, because like he's like, I want to be more vocal. I want to be more outspoken where I am. You know, and as a dad, you're like, <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> like, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but, like, for them, it's where they find themselves. You know, Anderson on the volleyball team or Madeline mm-hmm. on the field hockey team. And how do we engage these families now that we're going to be around with mm-hmm. over and over again? And then we're going to blink and they're going to be out of the house and, you know, me and Kelly hope that we'll have more time, you know, and, 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 and so I know you all know that, but like, I think a lot of this is you as a small group getting around together and saying, okay, what is God calling us to right now? Yes. It's not, which I appreciate, I think so many of your hearts are like, you want to do what Dan wants you to do, which is <laughs> a, a wonderful Maybe. posture, right? But that sense of, yeah, what does, what are the elders calling us to? And then where do we find ourselves? And that's, that's very organic, which is hard for me. I'm a planner. I like to have my black and white. But that's not like what we see in Scripture, right? When we see Scripture, there's, of course, black and white, the truth. Yeah. But the narrative is so often, mm. all right, we got these magicians, and they're all, they all got saved, and they've got all these books. Yeah. What do they do? Do they keep the books? Do they sell the books? And we'll make money off the books, and then we'll go plant some churches because of all the money they make? No, burn them. Yeah, yeah, right? you yeah. Know, like burn the book. So I, I think there's so many examples where it's just us needing to be desperate for the Lord. Yes, instead yes. Instead of just having a, a perfect plan. And, and trusting that he will lead. Yeah. He will lead and guide us as we seek his will. Yeah. He really will. And, and it, I'll be honest with you, there is that temptation, that black and white, like, it would be a lot easier if we were, this is what it is. You come into the church, you get assigned a group, they're do, spread out in all geography. But there's two problems with that. Number one, y'all would, re- would just totally buck against that system. You guys would just not do that. Number two, it wouldn't be real. It wouldn't be real. Because that's not how our families function. That's not how, how what, like you said, what we see, what we see in Scripture. Um, and so, yeah, we want to embrace some of those things. So, like, yeah, when some of your groups launch, some of them it's going to start, some of it's going to be a little bit more, okay, it's going to take a little bit to develop. What is this group going to look like? And that's okay. That's okay. Um, as if you are gathering, as messy as it looks like, you are winning. You are succeeding. I tell that with like, like to dads especially. Hey, re- read the Bible. Pray with your kids. If it some days it's going to be amazing, you're going to be like, wow, there's insights. Our family is growing, and other nights are going to be like, just staring at you. Yeah, just like just staring at you. well, or way worse. <laughs> and I was like, God's working through. All of it. Yes. All of it. And so, yeah, that, that's, that's what success is going to look like as we just open our hearts to this and pursue faithful steps of obedience this fall and continuing onward. So, yeah. Do you want to close this in prayer? Sure. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to enjoy this time together. We thank you for what was shared. Lord, I, just, I thank you that, that we are a part of a church where just the, just the dialogue we get to have, the, the, what we all feel in our hearts about wanting to glorify you, wanting to serve our brothers and sisters, wanting to be a blessing to the lost. Lord, that's you at work in mm. our, our church, in our lives. So we, we thank you for it, that you've, you've given us these burdens and these passions. And Lord, as we're saying, it's not this black and white process. It's us following you as our Lord and Savior. Yes. We, wanna, yes. we want to follow you. We want to listen to you. We want to be led by you. And so, Lord, we ask for, 
for you to speak and to guide and to direct our groups, Lord, to, to bring us together, to be able to build relationally, to be able to be vulnerable, Lord, to do, to do all these things we're, we're seeking to do, Lord. Our hope is in you yes. in doing them, yes. Lord. Our yes. confidence yes. is in you. And, and, Lord, we pray for just uh, an abiding, mm. our groups that mm. abide in you, leaders mm-hmm. who abide in mm-hmm. you, Lord, a sense of really just wanting to to lean in towards you and to say, mm-hmm. Lord, help us and guide us and um, strengthen us and use us, Lord. And, and so we pray that we would be people with hands open, mm-hmm. ears open, hearts open, Lord, and uh, that as we lean into you, uh, you will do great things. Yes, Father. So, Lord, we pray... Um, in these next couple of months that you would give us just your grace and, and, and um, your kindness and, and Lord that, that we would really see something build and that mm. we wouldn't say okay this is the end because the Sunday school class is over but really it's the beginning Lord we've, we've set some foundations and now we get to build on those foundations yes Lord uh, and so Lord you have been faithful and we know you will continue to be faithful and we pray for this in Jesus name Amen Amen Amen